God's word. Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You may be seated. Already muted my already muted myself before we got started this morning. So good to see you. Probably most of you are familiar with Transformers, right? I mean, in one form they're robots, in another form they're cars or planes or dinosaurs or whatever else that they happen to be transformed into. I mean, this was quite a franchise. I, I mean, it was popular 25, 30 years ago, but it morphed into at least five cinema movies, cartoons on Saturdays, toys in the, in the, in the uh, toy department, and you know that you have arrived as a franchise when you officially get a McDonald's Happy Meal toy. And they did several years ago. You could buy Transformer Happy Meals toy. You know, I... As I think about it, we didn't have these kind of fancy things when I was a kid. I mean, we had army men. We had, we had uh, cardboard boxes and blankets and sticks. But you know what? We were transforming those things too, weren't we? I mean, we transformed those things, some, some like this, but mainly in our minds, in our brains. It's not a new one. I found this one that you guys can appreciate. This is a, a kid or a parent who helped him who really did a good job of taking a cardboard box and making it into a transformer. Um, but you know that this transformation concept isn't really new, is it? People have been trying to do that for as long as life has been around. They're trying to transform themselves into perhaps something that they're not. The sad part is even Christians themselves um, can be transformed, and maybe not in a positive way. I mean, the whole idea of Christianity is transformation, right? God wants us to be transformed into something new, brand new creatures. But how often are even Christians transformed on Monday differently than they are on Sunday? But the idea of, of transformation that we're talking about in the Scripture and the, the passage that Aubrey read is, is a, a permanent, life-changing, radical, make people stop and take a double look and kind of uh, a transformation. The kind that makes them say, what in the world happened to you? Now, I mean, the passage today is don't conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve God's will for you. Well, most of you know that a couple of weeks ago we had a pastoral review, but it wasn't just a review of me as your pastor and our, and our relationship, but it was also a review of our church board and our relationship together, not just as, as leadership, but also with you as our church body and our church family. And some of the things that we came up with for our vision for the future, for what, what we are attempting to do, what we believe that God wants us to do is this. Moscow Church of the Nazarene leadership is going to do our best to follow Jesus to be radically transformed people and becoming God's salt and light in our community. We're going to talk about the transformation part. But this was what your church board said. This is what they wrote. We want to become a radically transformed people. Do, do we understand what radical means? Much less transformed? Well, we're going to see what Paul had to say about transformation today, and we'll tell you more about our plan, because we are putting together a plan to move that way. Well, the first question in the Scripture is this. Are you a conformer? Are you a conformer? It says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Don't be conformed. I, we understand what don't means, don't we? I mean, parents, you probably said it a few thousand times to your children. 
Wives, you've probably said it a few thousand times to your husbands, maybe. Don't is something that we understand. It's used so often, though, and so casually that it loses its impact when we see it in Scripture. We go, oh, don't. Right? But it's not a casual statement. It is a command from God through the apostle for us today, us, God's church. So the first part is now that you are presenting your bodies to God, this is the next step. You see, it's not a once and done. Present your bodies. Keep on presenting. Live up to that commitment. Now that you're presenting, no longer blend into the crowd. Quit using the world as a guideline for your behavior. Don't. Blend into the crowd. Don't look just like everyone else. Because we're presenting our bodies, we're presenting ourselves as living sacrifices to God. Quit using that world as that behavior. In fact, I command you, don't. Just don't. I kind of like that, don't. Don't do it. Don't present your body any longer. Just don't do it. You know, whenever there's a command like this in Scripture, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this, right? When there's a command like that, there is usually a consequence or, or, there, or, an el- or else. I mean, it's not lit- listed specifically here, but, it, but it's always implied. Did you know that there is a cost for disobedience to God's commands? I-, I wish I could tell you you could do whatever you want, but there will be a cost. In this particular situation, I don't think it's talking about, about the, uh, the outcome for a life choice of disobedience, which is hell. I mean, that's the choice. I mean, that's what the Scripture says is going to happen. But in this reference, it talks about a cost will be in a defeated, miserable, powerless, wimpy existence. Hmm. You know, even though I would say still a lot of people in America, we know it used to be up to 80% claim to be Christians. I don't think it's near that high anymore. There is a whole lot of professing going on without practice. Right? You've heard the story of a people who had a parrot who, who, who they taught him to say, I'm George Washington. Well, did you know that just by him saying he's George Washington didn't make him George Washington? Just like they say, just because you're, you're standing in the garage, it doesn't make you a car. Profession without practice is worthless, right? We need to practice, <laughs> we need to practice what I preach. More important, practice what you pe- preach. Well, the thing that Paul is talking about, the word here, is schema. We kind of recognize that word. It is the outward form that changes day by day. It's the part of you that's, that's different at 17 and 70. It's the part that, that, that's never exactly the same. I mean, you, you are you, but it's the part, the physical, external part that, that changes. What's really sad about that is this is the part that the world considers so important. Isn't it true? People are looking for ways constantly to change their image, to change the outward appearance. For many, it's safe and easy, but if we're not careful, it can be deadly. We can get so caught up in blending in and not making waves that our witness is worthless. I saw a cartoon of there was this whole group of kids that had big green mohawks and and big earrings in both ears. And the person said, why? Why? And they said, to be different, that's why. Did you know it's easy to be different when everyone's doing it? It's hard to stand out. The result, I think, when we live this way is the church in Laodicea. You remember what what was written to the church of Laodicea? You'll recognize it. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot, but because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. See, God doesn't intend for us to be conformed to this world. Like the chameleon that just kind of blends in with the surroundings. It takes on the nature and, and, and takes on the appearance of those who are around it. Paul makes it very clear, don't conform to the world. Not to that part, that schema part, that outward part that really is important, that shell that ever changing. Don't conform. The second thing he says is do. 
So I put it this way. Morphine isn't just for butterflies. In other words, be transformed. And the word is morphe, right? Be transformed. That's one of the most wonderful words that, that, that we can hear. Transformation is what we live for. It's what we long for, to be different, to be better, to, to cast off the old and put on the new. It's a, a theme that we see in movies all the time, in books, man's quest for meaning. We, we want to be transformed in one way or another. We want to we be something different and better and bigger and greater and grander than we already are. Transformation is God's gift to His creation. That's why we spend so much energy on it. We really have a desire for it, a, a long for it, that comes from the inside out. You might remember a cartoon Superman. I'll never forget it, this idea of transformation. He takes a lump of coal and he applies, applies Superman, superhuman strength, and he squeezes that coal and he applies heat from his x-ray vision or light vision or whatever Superman has, and he turns that lump of coal into what? A diamond. He turns it into a diamond. Some of you have been around, you know. You see, when we spend our energy on the outside, on the schema, that's, that's what we do, but God is working on the inside, the, the morphe, the, the, the unchanging part of who we are. Um. No offense to anyone, David, because I have a few in my family tree, but if you take a hillbilly you're not, and you send them to Emily Post School of Etiquette and you clean them and you clip them and you dress them, it doesn't matter what you do, you still got a hillbilly, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> But here's the important thing. If God does the work, He can take any broken creature and transform them from the inside out because He works on the morphe. We can just dress up the outside. We can clean it. But God can work from the inside. And hear me, God wants to work on the inside. That's where the real work takes place. Um, see, we all feel like that old caterpillar from time to time, and that's not a tractor for the farmers who are out in the field. We feel like uh, that, that is, we're just that squirmy-looking caterpillar -y thing, but all the time God is working on the inside to transform that caterpillar into something incredible and something beautiful. See, that is built inside of every single one of us. God created that. God built that inside of us to be transformed into something beautiful. He changes the essential stuff, the inside stuff. And, and before we know it, we're unrecognizable, beautiful creature. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. What happens to the old? It's gone. Behold, all things become new. It's time to get to the bottom line. If you're serious with God, there will be change. The transform transformation will be radical. Do you guys know what radical means? Pushing the limit. All the way. Not just part way, not just halfway, but I mean, we're pushing it. That's what radicals do, right? We see that happen right now across our country in a negative way. What would happen if, if Christians would get out of their shells and start to do that in a positive way? What would radical transformation inside the lives of God's men and women in the church today look like in this world that needs it desperately? That's what God wants from us and for us. You will still be you, but there will be, a, well, you'll be a new that you never dreamed possible. You'll be changing and growing from the inside out. And you know what the evidence of that's going to be? You'll start to see it in fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those things will be growing and maturing inside of you. Did you know that only you know if you're a Christian or not? I mean, really, truly, at the bottom line, only knew for sure, absolutely, positively know if you've surrendered your heart to, life, to Christ and entered into a relationship with Him. However, 
Others will be able to tell when you're being transformed. When things begin to change inside of you, you can't hide it. I mean, when God really is working on the inside, there will be change on the outside. Mm. You guys might be familiar with this. There's a quote. What's the point of being complete on the outside when you're broken on the inside? Don't try to find your identity in temporary things. They're going to get... They're going to get you to change you. You're going to be someone who God did not make you to be. This is the guy that wrote it. Nick Vucek. You guys might have heard his story. Born with no arms and no legs. He's one of the most powerful witnesses for Jesus on the face of the earth. And he has disabilities that most of us don't even, can't even have a concept of. This is a man who's allowed God to change the morphe. The outward form is still there. He didn't magically fix, but he changed him radically on the inside. And the way that happens, and the last point is this, it's a mind thing. By the renewing of your mind. This is where transformation really happens. Any change that doesn't affect us here is, is not real change. You've heard me tell you before the foot that will defeat you. You guys know what the foot that will defeat you is? It's the foot between your head and your heart. There's a lot of people who have great knowledge up here, but until it moves down here and creates transformation, it is of zero value. There are lots of people out there who have incredible knowledge up here about God and about Jesus, but until it transforms into a relationship, it's no good. And again, this transformation, this renewing of the mind and the tense and the mood is not a one-time event, but it's a continuing lifelong journey of growth and adventure. You see, it's not enough to, to come and come to the altar and feel a little conviction and have an emotional release. We must continue on this journey or we'll never find victory. We serve God with these bodies that he gave us, but the mind tells the body what to do. No matter how brilliant you are, without Christ in the picture, it's worthless in the schema of things. Paul says transformation will renew our mind. The word is kainos, which means that we won't have just a new mind, but we'll have a new character and a new nature. Again, it's talking about that morphe, that total transformation of our mind. The tense and mood indicates that it, it is a single point in time, a crisis, but it is so powerful that it continues to transform you into the future. You see, the mind is the only place that true metamorphosis will happen. Then, hmm, so there's no greater distance in the gap between what I know in my head and what I believe in my heart. Then, when you've been transformed in here, then you can test and approve God's will. In other, one, in other words, truly understand what is excellent and perfect. God wants you to be a transformer in the truest sense of the word. A transformed person who he uses to transform others. Did you know there's no greater joy than leading someone to Jesus? But I have found one joy greater. But it's the same. Is when someone who I lead to Jesus leads somebody else to Jesus. You know, like I said before, if I'd have known grandchildren were so much fun, I would have had them first. But I love spiritual grandchildren. That's why I'm so excited about people like Sarah who's out there. We invested in Sarah Brew, and now she's out there investing in other people, leading them to the Lord. That is the intention, that is the purpose, and the ultimate goal of our transformation is to bring other people into that transformation. I've got to tell you, though, this kind of relationship isn't for wimps or quitters or for those looking for shortcuts. It takes courage and guts and a desire to really become something for Christ. It takes real men and women to be Christians. Because they're willing to take responsibility for their lives and they're willing to do whatever, whatever it is that has to be done, whether they want to or not. 
You see, our world is full of tough guys and tough girls who simply conform to peer pressure and have no idea what real manhood or womanhood is about. The plan is easy. It's the doing it that's difficult sometimes. You see, when we give 100% to God, it doesn't mean that it's 0% for me. Even though that math doesn't add up, when I surrender all that I am to God, I get more, incredibly, immeasurably, unbelievably more back. And any losses that we might feel like we have when we surrender our heart to, to Christ are replaced by gains beyond our wildest expectations. If we'll simply take Him at His word, allow Him to transform our minds and renew our minds, and do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good and pleasing and perfect will. So the question today for us is this. Will we be transformed people? Will we really allow God to do the transforming instead of society, circumstance, stuff around us, pressure from people? Folks, uh, God really wants to do something with us and through us. We're in awkward times in our country, in our world, in our city right now. We don't know how this is going to work out with the coronavirus and, and all of the other stuff and school closures. I mean, the list goes on. It's, it's just a, it's a, there are so many different elements to that. But God is wanting to use us. Us, those who are here, those who are watching us, those who are a part of our church family. God can use you right exactly where you are. Even if you're around the world in a situation that seems impossible, God can and will use you to transform your world. But you must allow him to transform you. So this is our commitment to you as, as leadership in this church. We will do our best to be Radically transformed. That was the word they used. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I'm not exactly sure what that will look like. But at the very minimum is this. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. I will allow him to be Messiah. I will allow him to do the work that needs to be done in me and through me, and with you, so that we can indeed transform our world. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for the privilege of serving you. Thank you for the transformation which is possible when we love you and we trust you. And I pray in Jesus' name as, as your uh, church and as the leaders in this church move forward, that you will help us to be radically transformed. In other words, to the limit that it'll be so radical that people will see it. They can't miss it. That's what we desire, God, because I believe that's what you're calling us to do. So, Father, help us as we leave this place in a few moments to truly allow you to transform us. That we would truly be new creatures, new creations in Christ. And that we would allow you to renew our mind day by day so that we can test and approve your will for us. Thank you, for, Father, for people who are willing to partner in this. Thank you for people who are willing to allow you to do that work. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.